Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Today we're making Fu Qi Fei Pian. The name translates as husband and wife lung pieces. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, which scares many people away. It is a famous Sichuan dish that is made by braised beef slices and served with chili sauce. Really delicious and flavorful. <laughs> if you like Sichuan cuisine, you should definitely give this a try. So let's get started. Just to be clear, even though the name included lung pieces, the dish really contains lung. Here are the ingredients that I'm going to use today. Boneless beef shank, beef heart, and two kinds of beef tripe. You can use any of them. If you don't like animal organs, you can use beef shank only. Besides that, please allow me to talk about the beef tripe a little bit. There are actually four kinds. Each of them has their own taste and texture. You will have to adjust the cooking time depends on what you use. What I have today is honeycomb tripe and book tripe. The honeycomb tripe I got is not typical. It looks more like a blanket tripe, only one corner there that you can see the honeycomb pattern. Oh well, it was frozen when I got it, so it was quite hard to see. But it's not a problem because the way you prepare the honeycomb and blanket tripe are the same. The book tripe is really easy to tell. Those thin layers look like a book. This is my favorite tripe out of all four kinds. It got that nice crunchy texture. The reason I use two kinds of tripe today is to show the different ways to prepare them. Put everything in the big pot. The heart, the shank, and two kinds of tripe. We're gonna soak them in clean room temperature water for at least three hours. If you have time, you can let it sit in the fridge overnight. Animal organs usually have some unpleasant smell, which is one of the reasons why most people don't like to eat them. Soaking will help to remove that. Cover it and let it sit for at least three hours. While waiting, you have plenty of time to prepare the spices. You will need two pieces of star anise, one piece of cinnamon stick, two pieces of bay leaves, one piece of black cardamom that I slightly crushed, two teaspoons of Sichuan peppercorn, half teaspoon of fennel seed, two pieces of cloves, three pieces of red dry chilies. This is what we call Gao Liang Jiang, which I think it is dry galango. We only need a small piece. This is Shan Nai, also called Sha Jiang in Chinese. I think the English name is Canferia Galanga. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right. The text is on the screen. You can look it up. It is also known as sand ginger. We will need four small pieces like that. All these spices, if you miss one or two, won't be a big problem. However, I understand it is hard to collect everything, so I did find a spice set on the Amazon that includes all the spices that I'm using today. I'll put the link in the description. You can check it out if you need it. You can put all the spices into a spice bag. I have this mesh ball that is designed for spices. I'll link this product in the description as well. If you're interested, go check it out. Now let's take a look of the soaking ingredients. The liquid became red bloody color, which is what we want to get rid of. Take everything out of this pot and discard all the water. Put all the beef parts back into the pot except the book tribe. Why? As I mentioned before, book tribe only needs less than two minutes cooking. We just keep soaking it in clean water and set it in the fridge while other ingredients are braising. Fill the pot again with clean water. Put it on the stove and bring the water to a boil. Now you're gonna make a decision to decide if you want to discard this whole pot of water or not. It depends on your preference. If you only use beef shank here, you can keep the water for sure. 
but I used quite a lot of organs, so the water is a bit smelly. I decided to take everything out and switch to a new pot. Pour in two liters of boiling hot water, along with the spices that we prepared before. Throw in two pieces of scallion, some ginger slices, some garlic cloves. Add three tablespoons of soy sauce, three tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, two and a half tablespoons of sugar, two and a half teaspoon of salt. Drizzle in a teaspoon of dark soy sauce for the color. The water we add is boiling hot already, so it should come to a boil within a minute. Taste and adjust the saltiness, then cover it. Turn the heat to low. We're gonna simmer that for one and a half hour. If you have a pressure cooker, it will take only half of the time to cook. You might ask, when should we cook the book tripe? Technically, you can cook it any time, but I will wait until this pot has been simmered for one and a half hour. That way, you can cook the book tripe in this flavorful brine. Move it around to make sure it cooks evenly. In less than a minute, take it out. Use a scissor, separate those book layers, and set this in the fridge. Let's get back to the pot. You just turn off the heat. Let everything sit in that brine until it is completely cooled down. If you have room, you can put it in the fridge. It will take about six hours, so we got plenty of time to make the chili oil. Pour in two and a half cup of cooking oil in the pot, along with a bunch of scallion, few cloves of crushed garlic, some ginger slices, two pieces of star anise. Two small pieces of cinnamon stick and two pieces of bay leaves. Use low heat to slowly heat it up and let the aromatics to infuse the oil. On the side here, you will need two teaspoons of Sichuan peppercorn powder, one cup of chili flake. Make sure you use the chili flakes that fit your spice level. A quarter cup of sesame seeds and one teaspoon of salt. When the scallion starts turning dark color, you can take them out. If you have a thermometer, check the temperature. We want it to be around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour it into the chili flake in batches and mix it at the same time. If you pour all the oil in once, it will overflow, which is dangerous. Wait for this to cool down, then you can store it in a container. It will last about. Four months in room temperature. We call this Yu Po La Zi. I have used it in many of my recipes. We still have plenty of time to make the sauce. You will need eight cloves of garlic. Use a garlic presser or a grater. To that, we're gonna add some salt and one teaspoon of sugar. Mix them well. The salt and sugar will help to change the texture of the garlic. In about two minutes mixing. It should become a garlic paste. Add two tablespoons of Chinese black vinegar. Keep mixing it, then pour in one cup of the brine. This is the key of the sauce. The brine is being simmered for one and a half hour. It is full of the spices and the meat flavor. Give it a taste to adjust the saltiness. It should be saltier than what you normally like. Mine does need a little more salt. Including the salt that I add to the garlic, I used one teaspoon of salt in total to the sauce. When the flavor is right, you can add the chili oil. You can use less, but don't even think about skipping the chili oil. The sauce doesn't taste good without it. The hotness from the chili is not the main thing that we are looking for. The complex aroma and flavors in the oil are the keys that bring this dish to another level. Set the sauce aside. Let's talk about another Oriental ingredient: Chinese celery. I finally got a fresh one to show you. The stem part is much skinnier compared to the regular celery, but it smells ten times stronger, which is why we love to use it in this dish. It refreshes your mouth and balances the tanginess. Actually. 
this salary is a little bit too old in my opinion. You see the color difference? This one is much greener than the other one. When the salary is old or looking too green, that means it's very fibery and stringy, which is quite annoying to eat. So you definitely want to buy the lighter color salary. Discard all the leaves and old stem. Cut the salary with an angle. Chinese salary is a bit hard to find. You can use cilantro instead. If you're one of those people who hate cilantro, you can use shredded cucumber. Not a problem at all. This pot is completely cooled down now. Let's take a look. It just came out of the fridge, so the grease is solid. Get a strainer to fish that out. Take the tripe, shank, and the beef heart out. Slice all the meat into thin pieces. If you're wondering, why do I wait for the meat to cool down? Can you serve this dish when it's hot? Here is the answer. Yes, you can serve this dish hot, but you won't be able to slice the meat thinly. It will fall apart because it's too tender. When the temperature is cold, the meat will have a firm but still tender texture, which is what I think the best time to serve. Now let's do the work for the thumbnail. I wish I can just start eating right now, but I can't. I have to make a nice presentation so I can take a good picture. Anyway, once you have a layer of meat in order, you can just randomly fill up the rest of the space with the meat, then put some celery on the top. This recipe is enough to serve five to six people. I only used one third of the meat to make this presentation. There are still plenty of meat left. Cover the bowl with a plate, flip it over, garnish it with some cilantro, pour the sauce over it. At this moment, all that work we did, I felt so worth it. A lot of authentic and traditional Chinese food are complicated. Even though it is so much easier to just go to a restaurant, I prefer to enjoy the satisfaction and happiness that I get from making my own food. This smells so good. The chili oil, the Chinese celery, the garlic, all the spices, very well mixed together. If you can top some roasted peanuts right now, that would be even better. I totally forgot the peanuts as I was enjoying the dish. The flavor is so right. It's salty, savory, spicy. A little touch of acidity from the Chinese black vinegar. So authentic. This is exactly what you get in a Sichuan restaurant. And every piece of meat is soaked in that flavorful salsa, so tender and juicy. I can't think of any better words to describe that. <laughs> it's just so good. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes. Don't forget to take a look off my channel. I'm sure you will find out how to make your favorite Chinese food. New videos come out every Wednesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye.